So once in a while, you gotta fire a customer. And I would say this happens maybe once every two years. It's extremely rare that I decide to fire a customer. But doing business is about mutual respect. You want to have a roofer, or in case of Christmas light installer, you want a Christmas light installer who has integrity, who understands that a deal is a deal, and respects the integrity of whatever deal was, was agreed to, right? And this is something we keep doing. In fact, if you go back like two videos, we did this once again this week. And it's it funny, every time I do agree to help someone out, do a favor, because again, Christmas lights are not a big money maker for us. This is purely to keep our roofers busy. We do this as a service to our roofers, our in-house roofing crews, have employment before Christmas. There's nothing worth worse about being a shingler in the roofing industry and being one of our employees than basically Halloween comes and you're unemployed and you have to go unemployment unemployment or you have to do some other job you're not good at, find it find another job, something like that. So for that reason, we pay a dollar an hour into a kitty and if guys aren't late and you know guys show up for work, we put that dollar an hour away into a pot and then the end of the season they stick around the whole season see us through till to, to, to halloween they get that bonus and that's to help them kind of weather the storm if they don't have another job it's also to make sure they stay till the end stay as a team right but then after after halloween, for the guys that want to stay and the guys that we want to stay we uh provide them with the opportunity to do these christmas light installs so this is not a big business right so at the end of the day my incentive is to keep my guys working and so that means once in a blue moon, if it's a, you know, if the circumstances line up right, we'll give, uh, we'll give the roofers the job of installing someone else's lights. And you tell people, I can't guarantee the lights because these customers in effect are telling us, Hey, can I buy my own lights? I really need this. I really need to get my lights hung. Everybody else in the neighborhood has them. My kids really want to see them. It's usually some kind of story like that. And it's like, but you know, your lights are like, two dollars and sixty cents a foot and you know i can go buy these ones from k entire that are way cheaper and i explain to them the value difference and i go okay so then they go in and they go and I, I i agree to it and then we agree to do their lights help us avoid this because i fired a customer over this just now but this is normal lights now see how they go with these little wires like this right so every every couple of feet these wires change from bulb to bulb to bulb so it's not always these two wires that go see how there's my dog is excited and doesn't know what i'm doing but see how these two wires come in here well now in the next one it'll be one wire and a different wire uh when one of the, sorry, I lost you there for a bit. But one of these wires burns out, the bulb doesn't go out, but then also like the next 10 feet go out. And you can't really do a whole heck of a lot with these bulbs, right? There is a replacement method for some, right? They do come with some replacements in there sometimes. But even then, so we had a light string that was 66 feet. Half of it went out. We replaced a bulb. 10 more feet worked, but then the rest didn't. And so we're sitting there trying to diagnose the problem. And you can test them. And they'll literally work one minute, jiggle them, they don't work the next. You can test them beforehand, you don't, but at the end of the day, it's your job, if you're providing me with lights, to provide me with lights to work. Because if I'm just installing your lights, I'm assuming your lights work. If we're installing our lights, then if our lights don't work, I will show up and pay all the money to fix one bulb. I can give you three customers' phone numbers where they've seen me pull up with a $250 a day or $250 job, $500 a day lift, right? To fix one bulb. I can give you three customers phone numbers right now that can de testify that we've done that. But when you have our lights, they're installed like this. So see, it's a flat wire, right? And so that wire stays consistently flat, right? Like this, so the wire stays consistently flat like that. And that's how you keep your wire straight. Now you're probably wondering why I fired this customer. So what happened was yesterday I said, you know what? No problem. Give you a deal and I'll send the guys out tonight because it's a shorter job. It's Friday. So I'll send them there to do this smallish job, right? Get that done. And so it was 266 foot lengths and along the upper level of his house. Sent them out. Sure enough, they put the lights up and that 66 foot length didn't work. So 
Now, they had to, half of it didn't work, so then they're trying to fix the bulb and all that kind of stuff. So they had to redo that. Then in their frustration, because now remember, these people have kids. They got to get home to their families. It's Friday night, right? They have to pick up their kids from like daycare that their kids are going to be on the street at six o'clock. So they have to hurry. So they hurried. They made another small mistake. Not a big deal. So then today, they went out to redo it. Then while they're out there, the guy shows up with another set of lights, says, hey, can you do that section over there? But then it's not quite enough or it's not, the, the bucket won't reach quite enough, goes around like the back of the house. So then he's like, hey, why don't we put some planks on the lift and then put the other end on the roof? And you know, roofers, unfortunately, you can give them the employee handbook treatment all you want. You challenge them to do something stupid, 50% of the time they'll do it. So then, sure enough, they're like, okay, well, one of the guys agreed to try and do it. And then of course it was a dangerous situation. One side of the planks in the bucket, the other side on the roof, that's a whole other issue. So then I call and find what's going on and they tell me all this stuff about this extra 30 foot length the customer dropped on them. And then, you know, like, okay, well, we'll do a little extra because they're nice, they're roofers. They're not salespeople, they're not connected to the business. So they, you know, they agreed to do something nice. And on the surface, I wouldn't have bothered me so much. It's just when all of a sudden he starts pressuring my guys to do completely unreasonable, unsafe stuff that shouldn't have even been suggested. He shouldn't even be talking to them, but whatever. So I call him, I'm like, hey man, like, you know, they had to run that one length twice and like, why are you out there doing this stuff and asking them to put planks on the roof? Like, I don't send them there with planks for a reason. And uh, I was like, but I hope you understand, like I gave you a discount and then your lights didn't work and now I'm paying money so you can have Christmas lights. Like that can't be fair. We gotta discuss like what's a fair resolution. And essentially he's telling me like, too bad, so sad. Um, starts calling me buddy. You know, I don't know why you're having this conversation with me, buddy. Da, da, da. Your people fucked. I, mean, I shouldn't say that, but they messed up or whatever. And, and he's like kind of going on about this. And I mean, at the end of the day, my guys are there to do him a favor. And he doesn't. And I told him that on the phone. I said, you know, it's a smaller job. I'm not doing it for the money. I'll help you out. Right. Yeah, we'll do your lights. I'll do you a favor. And so really disrespectful. Right. And really unaccountable for the fact that his lights didn't work. And on, and I mean, we're talking, this is like a million dollar house. Right, like so, it's not like this person's living in a like a bungalow in Collingwood, you know, that he's renting. Right, there's a million dollar house, like out on an acreage, like in an estates area. Like this guy's not broke, right? And we're talking this job's measured in hundreds, not thousands. Like this was a deal, and so he's like unwilling to even explore an extra hundred bucks, right, to just cover the labor, let alone the day rate on the on the rental, right, that I have at his house, and so. He essentially said, oh, I'm with my kid. I don't have time for this conversation, buddy. You know, you're talking to me about this. I don't know why you're talking to me. I mean, what do you want me to do about it? It's your guys, got, your guys messed up. I helped them. He passed them an extension cord. Um, and so I, uh, so yeah, I told the guys, take the lights off. I'd rather pay. At the end of the day, my guys deserve respect. You come out there, start challenging them to do some cowboy shit that you know you wouldn't do. That's why you're hiring us to come out and install your lights. You wouldn't do it. So why would you ask someone else to risk their life for your Christmas lights? And then when they agree to do a little extra for free without talking to me, that's my problem, right? And then you also have your lights that don't work and they don't support, they don't even offer. Like they don't say, hey, you know what? Like buy them a hot, like people buy us hot, like buy us hot chocolates and like tip the guys and thank them. So if you're not even gonna like do the little bit of being willing to just own the fact that you didn't see value in the professional commercial grade lights that we offered. You said our lights are too expensive, so therefore you wanna buy crappy lights, and then when those lights were crappy, you don't wanna own up to it even a little bit, then you wanna disrespect me on the phone after asking my employees to risk their lives for your Christmas lights? I'm sorry, man. I'm pulling the lights off. We're packing up and going. I'd rather pay a hundred bucks to stand by integrity and good principles. Cause guess what? We, we know what's right is what's right. Right. And so I predict this becoming a bit of a PR nightmare with this guy. And, uh, so I'm getting out in front of it and putting out our side of the story because, well, sure. Maybe we could have, maybe we could have figured out the lights didn't work sooner, but at the end of the day, they're your lights. If I provide my lights, I'll show up to fix one bulb. If you're not gonna pay for my product, if you tell me my product's too expensive, then I'm gonna install the product you supply me. And the other day, our lights, we can't test prior to putting them up. You wanna know why? Because we build them, see? So if I show you here, around this window, we custom cut it, 
And then at the very end, we cut the wire and put plugs on. So we don't test our wire before putting it on. We literally hang it and then fix it as we go. The reason we don't test it is because we put our bulbs in one by one. They're not permanently fixed. So if one of these things is broken or one of these doesn't work, we can fix it. We can just go like that and put a new one in. And when one goes out, the whole string doesn't go out. So once in a while, you gotta fire a customer. And that is a one, two years kind of thing. So stick to your guns because I expect you to stick to your guns with me as a company. My guy has agreed to do the extra 30 feet. I wasn't gonna charge him for 30 feet. I just wanted to work out something for the section that didn't work. Thanos, he is like so confused right now. He's like, why are you walking around in circles talking on your phone? Play with me, play with me, play with me. Thanos, I'm sorry, I gotta make a point, buddy. But what's right is right. He is just out of control. I'm not playing right now. Look at him, he's nuts. But yeah, so that's the thing. Don't be afraid to fire a customer. And customers, we love you. I never want to talk poorly about you. Thanos, game over. I'm sorry, I had to give him the old talk down. And it's usually end game because his name's Thanos. No, end game. See, he's not stupid. It's about clear rules and boundaries. <laughs> What's this, John? Damn right, it's Yeah, man, thanks, John. You know, at the end of the day, like, I hate to do this kind of stuff. I really do. Because now I got to worry about some guy attacking. No, nope, end game. I got to worry about some guy attacking my business because he was disrespectful. If he just said, hey, Adam, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with what you're charging, right? Or I don't, I didn't even mention a number. I even said to him, I says, I was like, what do you want to do now? I says, well, well, I said, sir, we're going to have to, I'm going to have to tell you what it would be worth. And then you're going to get mad and tell me that's not good enough. And then we're going to have to meet somewhere in the middle. He didn't even want to entertain that concept, right? As far as he was concerned, it's just completely our fault. And you know, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. So I'd love to hear your comments below. Maybe we're total morons and we should just take every single hit that ever happens in life. But I don't know. In my opinion, respect buys you a certain amount of grace, right? If there was respect there, if you, like that whole like buddy thing, that drives me crazy. When people do this, like, I don't know, bud. I don't know, bud. Do you have buddy? Why are you talking about buddy? I like that. that that's the thing that really, that's the thing that really kind of set me off is all of a sudden it was like, because we're working outside in the cold, you just get to disrespect us because we're not some millionaire living in a mansion out in the estates of, uh, on the estates of wherever. So that's the way I look at it. Let me know your thoughts.